Hi, welcome to Whizbang Fabrics, one of San Francisco's newest fabric stores located in the Mission District in between the Mission and Potrero Hill. We've got um, a lot of cotton fabrics to offer. Everything is cotton and everything is printed, so you're not going to catch anything boring here. We've got a lot of different kinds of cottons um, for different uses. This is our home decorator section. You can use this for clothing all the way through any kind of home decorating project, as well as stuff from South Africa and some stuff here from Japan. Um, and then a lot of different big name designers in the sort of cotton fabric quilt world, Amy Butler, Joel Dubery, Anna Marie Horner, Heather Ross, and the such. Um, there's lots of projects you can make from the fabrics at our store. We've decided to show you um, how to turn fabric into wall art. It's a good way of maybe using some scraps of fabric you have lying around, maybe something you bought a while ago and don't know what to do with, or maybe something that you just don't want to cut up, but you want it out on display. So, we've got um, a few pieces up here on the wall. Great for a nursery. We've um, put the fabric behind embroidery hoops. Keeps it really lightweight and really easy to just throw up on any kind of wall anywhere. We've also decided to cover some um, just basic canvases that you can get at any supply store that are ready to paint on. We just decided to cover them with fabric, also with scraps that we had lying around the store. Um, I also love to collect vintage fabrics, so I've taken um, some of my home decorator fabric and glued on with a craft glue some fabric butterflies that I had sitting around my shop. And you can also do much larger projects if maybe you're on a budget for your living room but you want something big and bright and colorful on your walls, you can take a much larger canvas and stretch one of our home decorator weight fabrics on there. They're 56 inches wide, which gives you a lot of room to play with. And one nice thing about it is that you can make some pillows or throws to go with it. So we've taken three fabrics that all come together and turn it into just something you can do easily for your living room or for your bedroom. So we're going to show you how to take a piece of fabric, frame it, and put it up on your wall. You could use something such as this, a stretcher canvas that's already made, or if you don't want to make something, you can find something you have around the house. I have an old cork board that was sitting around my house that I don't use anymore. I didn't want to get rid of it. So I've decided I want to cover this and perhaps make something a little more useful out of it. So what you need when you are using fabric to cover something, fabric, what you're covering, and the most important thing, the ever so handy staple gun. It's important to measure what you are covering and depending on how deep the item is, you want to cut out enough fabric so that you can wrap it around the back. This cork board happens to be 20 inches by 25 inches, so I've given it a 2 inch border around the cork board so that I can pull and cover and have enough fabric. You want to lay your fabric out and make sure all of the wrinkles are out of it. You want your fabric to be as taut as possible and as straight as possible. And then center what it is that you're framing into the middle of the fabric. And as you can see, we've got the two inches here, the space here and here as well. The first thing you wanna do when you are covering a board or if you're working with something like this on the wall, you want to start at the centers and make sure that everything will wrap and fit around and that you've got it in place. The first thing you'll do is you'll pull in the middle of your board away from you, pull the fabric away from you in one hand, and then with your staple gun, staple down in the middle, making sure to get on the wooden frame of what it is you're covering. Then you want to swivel it around and go to the opposite end 
And in the center again, pull the fabric away from you with one hand and staple with the other. Again, making sure to get on the wooden frame. Now you'll do the sides in the exact same way. You want to pull the fabric with one hand, staple with the other, and again on the other side. Also relatively in the center of the board. And now you want to go through and put staples on either side of your center one, again doing the opposites first and then moving to the other sides. So pull with one hand. The reason why you pull your fabric is that you want it to be taut. You don't want there to be any ripples so that it looks like it's laying flat. So pull with one hand, staple with the other. A lot of people compare this to stretching a drum. I've never stretched a drum, but you want to make sure that you get as much tension across the entire surface as possible. Again, we'll do the sides again. And you don't want to staple too far down to the ends because it makes it more difficult to do the corners if you do. And we'll be on the corners in just a sec. And maybe one more for the top and one more for the bottom. So now it's time to do the corners. As you can see, there's a lot of material left over. You can trim it down a little bit if you want. I usually like to trim it when I'm done. However, I rarely trim these types of things because that's the back side and nobody's gonna see it. So you wanna do the corners like you're doing perhaps hospital bed corners on your bed. So you want to Use your fingers to bring the fabric in close to one side. Pull again with your left hand going over. And then pull up on this. And then you want to use your fingers to just kind of tuck and pull so that it's nice and neat and doesn't make too much bulk on the outside. And then you want to make sure that you get all the fabric that you just tucked under and give it a nice good staple. And then clean up the rest of your space. I'm just doing some last minute stapling to make sure everything is in place. Okay, so now we're done with our finished piece. We've taken fabric, covered the cork board, and it's no longer just a cork board. You can hang it in your kitchen, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, in the hallway, um, just as a decorative piece of art. Because it is a cork board, you can turn it into something multifunctional. Um, you can pin your menus to it if you're hanging it in the kitchen. Maybe if it's in your bathroom, put uh, a picture of someone you love. And there you've got your finished piece. Thank you.